So today we're going to talk about ionic bonding with polyatomic ions. And a polyatomic ion is just an ion that's made up of a group of bonded atoms. So the word poly means many. We make the AP kids memorize all these, but you have an ion chart on the back of your periodic table that tells you what all these are and what their names are. So one example is NH4, okay? So notice it's NH4 plus. That means that it's made up of a nitrogen and four hydrogen atoms, and it has a plus one charge. And the name of this ion is called ammonium. And it's the one positive polyatomic ion that we're going to use this year. Okay? And there's a whole lot more. So we can um, look at all of these. So the first one's ammonium. The second one here is a nitrogen with three oxygens attached to it. It has a negative one charge and it's called nitrate. This first one's ammonium. Okay. Um, CO3 is a carbon with three oxygens attached. It has a negative two charge and the name of this is carbonate. And PO4 has one phosphorus, four oxygens, the whole shebang has a negative three charge, and this one's called phosphate. So as you look at these, and as you look at some of the other polyatomic ions on your chart, what you'll notice is that they tend to end in eight or eight. Okay. Now you have to be careful when you look at these because the ending is really important. So the way you spell it, if you spell it differently, it means something different. All right, so you've got your table there. Don't be afraid to use your table. So like I have here on the, on the front board, um, there is this ion, NO3, with a minus one charge that is called nitrate. There's this ion, NO2, with a minus one charge that we call nitrite. And then, of course, we've already talked about this one, which we call nitride. So the ending is really, really important for distinguishing between the different ions. So pay attention to that when you're looking at your table, okay? So we're going to start off writing the formulas. So the first one we're going to look at is calcium sulfate. And so when we're given a name like this, what we're going to do is look up the two ions on our ion chart or the periodic table. So calcium is in group two. It has a plus two charge. And sulfate if you look that up in your table, is SO4 with a minus two charge. So now we come to the part that's sort of like what we've already done. We want to make sure that the charges cancel out. And so we want to know how many calciums and how many sulfates do we need for the charges to cancel out and become zero. And the answer is one. We need one of each. And so we're going to write it this way. CaSO4. So we're going to slide those two together. Notice that our answer does not have any charges in it. Also notice that our answer has that 4. Sulfate is SO4. So that 4 in sulfate doesn't go anywhere. It stays right where it is. Okay. Here's our next example. 
magnesium phosphate. So we're going to look up the charges. <clears throat> and now we kind of have to think this through. This isn't quite as easy as the last one. Each magnesium has a plus two charge and each PO4 has a minus three charge. So here's my magnesium. It has a plus two charge. Here's my phosphate. It has a minus three charge. Remember phosphate is made up of a phosphorus with four oxygens attached to it. So we can think of each of these as kind of being their own thing, right? And if we add the charges together just the way they are, so if we say, okay, one magnesium and one phosphate, they're not going to add up to zero, right? Because plus two and minus three doesn't add up to zero. So what we're going to say is, okay, well, what if we had two magnesiums? I don't even know. Okay, so notice that now we have two magnesiums and one phosphate. And when we add all the charges together, four plus four minus three is positive one. Still not zero, right? But you have to have three magnesiums and then two phosphorus. Oh, that's where I'm going. Okay, so we're going to copy this. Okay, so now I've got two Phosphor phosphates, okay, still not zero, right? We've got positive four and negative six. So let's put in one more magnesium here. Okay, now if I add up all the charges, I get zero. So what I want to say in my compound, I want to show that I have three magnesiums, one, two, three, for every two phosphates, okay? So this part is easy. We're gonna say Mg3, we need three magnesiums. The phosphate's kind of tricky because if I write this, I say, okay, I wanna say I have two phosphates. And if I just put the two here, that makes it look like I have three magnesiums, one phosphorus and 42 oxygens. Ah, good idea, yes. So one way we get around this, instead of just putting the two out there and hoping that somebody knows what we're doing, um, we're going to put parentheses around the PO4 and put a two outside. That says that my formula needs three magnesium ions and two phosphate ions for the charge to be zero. Okay, so that's my formula. MG3PO42. Now, we're going to make a little note here. The only time we use parentheses is when We need more than one polyatomic ion to cancel the charges. in our compound. Okay, that's the only time. So that's the only time we have to use parentheses is if we need more than one polyatomic ion to cancel the charges in our compound. If we only need one polyatomic ion, don't need parentheses. Things that are not polyatomic ions do not get parentheses. 
And it seems like every year when I teach this, some people decide that they're just going to cover all their bases and they just, just put everything in parentheses. And that's not right either. Okay? So polyatomic ions, when I need more than one to cancel out the charges. That's when you use parentheses. Okie dokie. All right. All right. So ammonium phosphate. So here's ammonium our one positive uh, polyatomic ion, it's NH4 with a plus one charge. And here's phosphate, PO4 with a negative three charge. So notice, with our charges here, we are gonna need three ammoniums for every one phosphate. So we're gonna need three of these and one of those. So which one will get parentheses around it? The first one. The first one, right. Okay, so PO4 is not going to get parentheses because we only need one of those in this compound. All right, so here's what my compound looks like. Right? Okay. And our last example here, aluminum nitrate. So aluminum has a plus three charge. Nitrate is NO3 with a minus one charge. So to cancel out our charges, we need one aluminum and we need three Nitrates, or actually I think we have one. Do we not have one more example? This is the last one, okay. All right, so we're gonna write Al, and then we wanna say that we have three nitrates. And nitrate is polyatomic, so we're gonna put parentheses around it. Okay. So the next, next thing that's up in your notes is a little practice. So I want you to do that right now. I'll give you a chance to work on that, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about what the answers are, okay? <clears throat> now, magnesium hydroxide is kind of tricky, and so I want to spend a little bit of time talking about this one. Hydroxide is a polyatomic ion even though it doesn't have any subscripts in it. So what I mean is, like, a lot of our polyatomic ions, like NO3, SO4, C2H3O2, they all have subscripts. But hydroxide is still a polyatomic ion, even though it doesn't have any numbers as subscripts, because it's made up of oxygen and hydrogen and it has a negative one charge. So if I want to write the formula for magnesium hydroxide, we can see that we're going to need one magnesium and we're going to need two hydroxides for our charges to cancel out, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the question is how do we write that in our formula to show that we have one magnesium and two hydroxides. And here's what always happens. I always have students write this. And that's not saying what we think it's saying. That is saying that I have one magnesium, one oxygen, and two hydrogens. And what I want to say is that I have one magnesium and two hydroxides. And so what we have to do here is we have to put parentheses around the OH. That says that I've got two hydroxides. That is really, really important. Every year I talk to my students about this and I talk about how important it is to put those parentheses around hydroxide and how the only time we do that is when there, we need more than one to cancel the charge. Every year there's someone who misses this on the test. And my goal 
is before I retire, I would like all of my chemistry students to get this question right. More questions? <laughs> oh, man. I won't. Okay. Just make a question one and give us the so, answer. So when you see a question like this on the test, I'm counting on you to get this right. Okay? So if it's going to be like aluminum hydroxide or calcium hydroxide or zinc hydroxide, don't forget the parentheses. Because if you all get it right, I'm going to be so happy. I can retire in five years in peace. Don't disappoint me. Okay? No <laughs> well, I got you know, five other tries, I guess. But I'd like to be this year. You know, that would make this year a whole lot better, right? It's already so weird. <clears throat> All right, so here it is. Magnesium hydroxide and um, calcium and carbonate, CaCO3. Now, these are some kind of fun compounds that you probably already have heard of before. Um, this calcium carbonate is chalk like what you would write on the sidewalk with or chalkboard. Um, magnesium hydroxide, if you've ever heard of milk of magnesia, which is kind of an old school medicine for an upset stomach, is um, magnesium hydroxide. <clears throat> Aluminum sulfate, I believe, is used in deodorants. Um, calcium sulfate is in plaster of Paris, like if you've ever had an old school cast. That's calcium sulfate. And um, I don't know of a use for calcium phosphate, but ammonium nitrate. Do, have any of you ever learned about the Oklahoma City bombing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Timothy McVeigh uh, um, blew up the Morrow building. It was a homegrown terrorist. Um, and that was what his van was packed with. Um, ammonium nitrate is a fertilizer. Prior to that incident... You could just walk in anywhere, tractor supply, and buy as much ammonium nitrate as you wanted. But after that, then they started monitoring who was buying ammonium nitrate because, you know, who would have thought a van full of fertilizer could cause so much damage? And it killed a lot of people. It was a really scary time. So anyway, these are some common uh, compounds. Oh, the other thing is, what's, what's really cool about this compound is part of the reason why there's so much energy, like what, why it can cause such a huge explosion is because of the nitrogen. It has so much nitrogen in it, and what happens, we'll talk about what happens with the nitrogen bonding and how much energy it releases. So that's gonna be in the spring, okay? So you're gonna take your quiz, you're gonna do Worksheets three and four, which is just basically naming and formula writing with polyatomic ions. Okay, so you've got time to do that right now. 